Welcome. Today we're here to talk about how to get started with RTX 64 2013. But before we get started, I just want to go over this quick architectural overview for those of you who are new to RTX. So if we look here, what essentially is going on is RTX transforms Windows, and in this case, 64-bit Windows, into a real-time operating system. And the way it does that is we're able to, with RTX, dedicate X number of cores to be used with Windows, and then the remaining cores to be used in real time on RTX. So essentially, that's what RTX does, is takes a multi-core platform, dedicates some for Windows, and dedicates the, re the remaining cores for real time processing. OK, so in this next couple minutes, we'll go over three major things. We'll talk about how to install and activate or license RTX 64. We'll configure, do some basic configuration for RTX 64 to get you started. And then finally, we'll create a small project using the Visual Studio Project Wizard. Okay. But before I get started in this section, I just want to point out that I will be licensing or activating RTX 64 using a direct internet connection. We do support an offline mode if your machine isn't directly connected to the internet, and you can get more information by visiting our website. So let's go ahead and get started. Once you've downloaded RTX 64 and opened up the folder, you'll notice that there are several installation packages inside. The first one being the RTX Analyzer, so this helps you to essentially look at your system and to determine if it's, it's compatible with RTX. The next thing is the Merge Module, so that's what the MM is for. This is for customers who have their own custom installation utility for their own product and they just like to integrate RTX into that same installation. So that's that one. And then here are the two most important pieces, and that's the runtime and the SDK. And you'll see they're separate. In previous versions of RTX, this was actually done as a single installation. The reason why we've separated it is more for ease of use. So that, for example, you can install the SDK on just your development machine, and then you can install the runtime on that same machine or a separate target machine if you'd like. And also by keeping the SDK separate, this allows us to, or provide different versions of the SDK to you and you'll be able to install them on the same development machine. So let's go ahead and get started and do the installation and by the way you can do these in any order. I'm just going to run the SDK first because the runtime actually requires a reboot and we'll save that till the end. So let's go ahead and start the SDK installer. And so for the sake of time you might see me time elapse some things to speed things up but overall it should be pretty quick. So if you notice here, uh, this is the first window that pops up for the installation. And in the bottom left hand side here, you'll see an installation guide. So you can click on this and it'll open up the PDF. And this will have a lot more detailed information for the installation. So you're welcome to, to go through this. And again, it's right here, just at the, the first window of the installer. So let's go ahead and click Next. And here is the EULA, so feel free, get a chance to read through this. This is all the legal agreements. And then, so here we'll click Accept and click Next. And here is where we'll install. So this is the default uh, directory path for the SDK. You can change it, but we're going to take the defaults for now. And in this screen, you'll be able to select the different components and what you want locally available, or do you want it you know, not to be downloaded at all onto your target just to save memory. So this is really nice. And here you can see it's like sample code. If you purchase the TCP IP stack, you can select that, and also Visual Studio support. So we're going to leave the defaults for now. Click Next. And we're going to go ahead and install. So that didn't take very long. It shouldn't take more than a minute. And we'll go ahead and click Finish here. And then now you, what you've seen pop up here is the activation and configuration utility. So you can choose to do the activation here, but I'm going to go ahead and do this at the end after the runtime is installed so we can activate the entire product all at once. So we'll go ahead and uh, close this. So now that the SDK is installed, let's go ahead and install the runtime. And so here again is the first screen of the installer. And so you can look at the install guide. It's the same one we saw before. We'll go ahead and click Next. Here is the end user license agreement for the runtime. We'll go ahead and click I Accept. Click Next. This is the directory path for the RTX 64 runtime. Again, you can change it, but we'll take the defaults. 
and then here is where you can select the components you want locally installed again to help or if if you purchase your TCP IP stack you can have this available as well okay and so let's go ahead and click install and just say we'd like to install this this is just a Windows security thing so nothing to be alarmed we'll go ahead and always trust things from Intel zero okay and that completes it so again it shouldn't take very long not more than a minute or so and so we'll go ahead and click finish here so now that the activation configuration utility popped up again here is where you will paste the activation key that you received in the email from Interval Zero. So inside of this email, not only are there the activation keys, but you will also find the download links for RTX 64. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And if you look here, all the activation keys are concatenated together. So here you'll see, here's the runtime activation key. Right behind it, you'll see is the SDK, or Software Development Kit. And if you purchase a TCP IP stack, here it is as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate the product, and I am connected to the internet, so should just take a moment here. And you can see everything has worked. Its activation has succeeded, and you'll see check marks next to the different components that I've actually activated. And so if you look here, I have a runtime ultimate, but it's not configured. So the next thing you want to do is click on the configure button and set up how you want the cores to be distributed between Windows and RTX. So by default, You'll see that one core is dedicated for Windows, and because this is just an eight-core system, I have seven dedicated for RTX. You know, this is an ultimate. I do have the option of up to 63 real-time cores, but again, this is only an eight-core system, so the max I can run is seven real-time. So the way I want to change this is the easiest way is just click on these icons. You can change it in in these boxes if you'd like, dialog boxes. But as you can see here, I just changed it now to where four cores will be dedicated for Windows and the remaining four will be dedicated for RTX or real time. So let's go ahead and click done and you should see now here's the pop-up just asking me to restart the system. So let's go ahead and restart. Now let's talk about configuring RTX 64. So if we look here, this is the really the main function you'll be using for all of the configuration. So it's called RTX 64 config, and you'll run that from a command prompt. So there's a lot of different functions that are supported, but again, this video is to get you up and running very quickly, and in the future you might see some more technical videos over all these options. So let's go ahead and get started. Once you've installed RTX 64, the first thing you'll want to do is just some basic configuration. So in order to do that, you're going to want to open up a command prompt like I have here. And again, you're going to use the main function RTX 64 config. So this is the main routine you'll use to essentially manipulate RTX 64. So if you enter that, here's the help that pops up. And you'll see all the different arguments you can use with this function. So I know there's a lot here, so I'm just going to highlight the main ones. So the, the really the main ones include start and stopping of the subsystem and status. So those are the ones you'll be using the most. There's a lot of other ones here. In another video, we'll go over these three at the bottom, interface, TCP, TCP IP and device, and these are really related for anything with the TCP IP stack and networking. Okay, but that's reserved for uh, another video. But the only other t one I really want to point out is this one called HAL Timer. So let's actually uh, start the subsystem and we'll look at this HAL Timer function or option. Okay, so if I enter in RTX 64 config slash status just to get a baseline, you can see that the whole subsystem is halted right now. So let's go ahead and start the subsystem. And so this will take a moment. But you can see now the subsystems running. Just to verify, we'll get a status, and you can see all the parts of RTX are actually running now. Okay? And now back to that HAL timer. So just to again come back to here, a lot of the, the options here in their default states are actually fine for a majority of applications. But this HAL timer one is one that many people might want to play with based on you know their timer needs. So if we go ahead and enter the RTX 64 config slash HAL timer. 
you'll see that the default is, this is in microseconds, we have 100 microsecond ticks inside of our system. So this is fine for many applications, maybe you, know, you just need a multiple of this, but you have full control if you want to change this to say a higher resolution like 10 microseconds, or even something slower like 1 millisecond, or even you may be a multiple of 8, you can go to 80 microseconds. So we'll go ahead and, and change this to say 80, because we might want to do a, a multiple of 80. So if we enter that in, you can see the value has changed. And so now if we stop and then restart the subsystem, now we'll get a hardware interrupt for the timer every 80 microseconds. All right? So that's really it for some basic configuration of RTX 64. Now let's move on to the next section. Now that everything's configured, let's go ahead and create a small project using RTX 64. So what we're going to use is simply the project wizard built within Visual Studio. So let's do that. Now that we have RTX 64 configured and we have the subsystem running, we can now create a small project. So in order to do that, here we are in Visual Studio. We're going to go to File, New, Project. And if you look here, now we have the application wizard from Visual Studio. And at the top here, we have an RTX 64 application. So we're going to click on that template. And here's the name of the project. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to pick Sample. Okay. Click enter and here's the first window for the RTX application wizard. Here you can just see brief description. We're going to go ahead and click next. Here are the settings for the RTX project. We're going to want to build an application or .rtss is the extension. We're not going to need TCP IP support so we'll leave that unchecked. We're going to want a C++ project and we're going to want C runtime support. So leave those as they are and click, click next. And we're going to want a program framework. So these are the header files and some base source files for your own code. And in this case, we're going to want some sample code generated, an event server thread and a periodic timer thread. And click Finish. OK, so that took a second. And now, if you look on the left-hand side in the Solution Explorer, we have our sample project. And if you look in the source files here, sample.cpp will open it up. You can see that this code was generated from the RTX 64 application wizard. If you scroll down, you'll see there's a lot of comments, so it's pretty well documented. You can see right here, here is the resolution of the periodic timer thread that was created. And if you scroll down even further, here's where the events were being created. And look around here, you'll even see comments on telling you where you can put your code for the different events, for example. Okay, so really a great starting point for you to build upon and to make your own custom projects. So now let's go ahead and do a build. But before I do that, just want to show you here's the pull down. You can see here the different build configurations. So if you're familiar with Visual Studio, you're probably already used to a debug and release configuration. Now, because we installed RTX, we have an RTSS debug and an RTSS release. So this is the RTX versions. So you can build a debug version of a, of a real-time application or you can build a release version. So by default you'll see it come up as a RTSS debug configuration. So we'll leave it like that and we'll go ahead and do a build. So you can see here we've built successfully and now we're gonna run. But before I do that I just want to point out this window right here. So this thing is called RTX server. So this is essentially the standard out window for RTX. So this is where all the printfs that are built under an RTX application will come out. So when you do printfs under a Windows app, you under you probably are familiar with the Windows standard out. This is the standard out window for RTX applications. Okay? So let's go ahead and and run so we can hit play here or function 5. And you can see here under the RTX server that the child thread ran, we received event 1 main and now we received event 2 so everything ran successfully and we've just run our first RTX 64 real-time application thanks for spending the time to watch this video hope you found it very helpful in getting you started with RTX 64 so in the future you know please reach out and and we're excited to hear from you whether you have some feedback as for additional videos or you have some feedback on the ones you've just seen and here's my contact information here and we look forward to seeing you again